produced may have had as much to do with survival or not as the mode of life of the adult. The world may be collapsing around her, but she's determined to secure a future for her offspring. Her eggs will incubate for the next eight months. Only time will tell whether this mother's efforts are in vain. In what is now the Atlantic coast of North America, giant straight nautiloids abandon the dying reefs in search of food. They move into brackish water. But this is the Eurypterids' turf. With nautiloids moving into these waters in search of food, the ancient power struggle with the Eurypterids is renewed. This may be the Eurypterids' territory, but fortune still favors the larger creatures. For the nautiloids, it's a feast. Only a few Eurypterids manage to escape. But famine is inescapable, even for the once powerful. As the gamma ray apocalypse intensifies, extinction threatens every species. From microscopic plankton to the giant nautiloids, to our own ancestors, the jawless fish, Astrespus. If they don't survive, will there be a future for anyone? but compelling new theory. A gamma ray burst produced by a nearby supernova may have triggered the first great mass extinction in the history of the planet. The death rays set in motion a horrific chain reaction that threatens all life on Earth, present and future. Eight months into the disaster, the world is drastically changed. The shattered molecules of Earth's atmosphere swirl around the globe, forming a witch's brew of toxic gases. Atoms realign into nitrogen dioxide, the noxious brown gas we know today as smog. The thick blanket of putrid air blots out half the sun's rays. World temperatures plummet 10 degrees Fahrenheit. In northern Europe, the drop in water temperature is bad news for the coiled nautiloids. Their eggs, laid months ago, aren't developing normally. The cooler water temperature has slowed down the embryo's growth and open invitation for hungry bacteria to move in and consume the developing nautiloids. The species is in jeopardy. Organisms are adapted for their local environment. If that environment changes, they're in trouble. If it changes extremely, they'll die. If it changes just a little bit, they'll still live, but they won't reproduce. The few hatchlings that do make it are thrust into a harsh and unforgiving world. They'll spend most of their short lives searching desperately for food. And still, they're doing well compared to other species. Their strong spiral shells allow them to live in deeper water, sheltered from the worst effects of global cooling. It is now 10 years after the gamma ray burst. In southern Mexico, the change is stark. The temperature of this reef has dropped 20 degrees, accelerating the destruction of the food chain. A once vibrant habitat is now a dingy graveyard. As temperatures cooled, those animals that could move did, but so many of the animals in the Ordovician were not movable. These things grow in place, solitary, the corals, the brachypods, the sponges. There's no pick it up and move it. 
you're there for the duration, for better or for worse. And as it got worse, that was the end for them. Calcium carbonate makes up the shells of many of the animals that form a reef. And calcium carbonate, physiologically, is difficult to secrete in cold water. Cooler water meant much more difficult times for these organisms. They couldn't build as much uh, calcium carbonate. The reefs essentially died. This is another catastrophic side effect of global cooling, deadly and unpredictable weather. The climate was incredibly stable, not anymore. For the first time in millions of years, there are big temperature swings, creating strong ocean currents, which in turn drive more violent weather. It's like a never-ending wave of Category 5 hurricanes sweeping the globe. Weakened reef animals are smashed against the rocks. that still have some strength left seek shelter away from the turbulent surface water. An escape for these guys would have been, let's go deep. Certainly that initial sense of their safety and depth would have taken hold. And you see all these long cone nautiloids crash diving. Just this huge herd of things heading for deeper water. But the dive to safety carries hidden danger. The water pressure is too great for their long, straight shells. The ultimate irony, the planet's greatest predator is now its victim. Their cousins, the coiled nautiloids, have tougher, sturdier spiral shells. They can wait out the storms in the deeper, more stable water. Violent storm systems pummel the earth. The future is looking bleak. The dead wash ashore on coastlines across the world. With no surface animals to scavenge their remains, their bodies pile up by the thousands, like casualties of war. 500 years after the gamma ray strike, a third of the world's animals cease to exist. And for those creatures still struggling to survive, there's little hope. All life on Earth is teetering on the brink of extinction. Four hundred fifty million years ago, Earth endured its first mass extinction. A controversial theory contends that a lethal gamma ray burst slammed into Earth, tearing apart our atmosphere and damaging the protective ozone layer. Intense sunlight poured in, destroying the food chain. Starvation set in. Then the double whammy, the 